the Philippines' inflation slows down in June as prices of foods and fuel drop. Oil firms target to implement fuel price adjustments next week. The Department of the Interior and local government sets to file charges against former Cebu City Mayor Tomas Osmeña for stripping the mayor's office bare after stepping down. The DPWH targets the completion of Skyway Stage 3 in the first quarter of 2021. And the biggest earthquake in years rattles Southern California. Good evening. Inflation eased last month according to inputs from the Philippine Statistics Authority. This is the lowest since September 2017. Monokson clarifies why. The country's inflation rate slowed down last month according to the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA. Inflation is the general increase in prices. This includes services and products bought by consumers. From 3.2% in May, inflation eased to 2.7% in June, the lowest since September 2017. The Duterte administration's economic managers have estimated that the inflation rate last month still hit the target of 2-4%. to the decline in the prices of food and non-alcoholic beverages are the two main drivers why inflation slowed down in June. Prices of rice, vegetables, fish, meat, and even housing, water, electricity, and oil also decreased. The PSA said that rice tarification is the leading factor why the prices of rice have gone down. The negative inflation rate for rice uh, can be explained by the rice tarification. So we've been seeing reduction in the price of rice in the previous months. In a wet market in Quezon City, some consumers say they feel the cheaper price of products. Juvi managed to buy more products with a 500 peso budget. She was even able to buy a pack of hot dogs because she still had spare cash. Juvi said that prices of goods now are much lower than those in the previous months. Okay naman, kasi nakabudget naman yung pinamimili namin. Kasi mura rin dito eh. Hindi kasi gawa nga nung uma, ano eh, umulan. Diba medyo bumagyo. Pero tama lang naman. Hindi naman ganun kataas. The PSA projects the inflation in the coming months is expected to be around the same level as that in June. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Prices of diesel, gasoline and kerosene will be adjusted next week. According to industry players, they would implement a 10 to 20 centavo increase in price of gasoline, while diesel and kerosene prices would go by 35 to 45 centavos per liter. This will be the first rollback for diesel and gasoline. However, a total of three increases in prices of gasoline had been recorded last month. The oil price adjustment is due to the movement of prices in the world market. The Department of Justice conducted their preliminary investigation on a complaint filed by Securities and Exchange Commission against Kappa founder and President Joel Apolinario and seven others. But none of the respondents was present. My Bermudez will tell us why. The Department of Justice conducted today its preliminary investigation on the complaint lodged by the Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC against Kappa Ministry founder and President Joel Apolinario and seven others over an alleged investment scam. But none of the respondents or their legal team appeared before the DOJ. While SEC's Enforcement and Investor Protection Department Director Attorney Jose Aquino, together with two witnesses, Lester Aquino and Brian Chang, subscribed to their respective affidavits. Aquino said that they have two additional witnesses well we have also we have our staff who did the surveillance and we have also other uh, other witnesses who were uh, who also pretended to have invested Kappa has not issued their official statement in relation to Apolinario's non-attendance. The regulatory body is still establishing Apolinario's other addresses and if Kappa's other assets can be freezed. But when asked why Kappa's treasurer is not included among those charged, Attorney Aquino said, We have identified somebody is holding the money of the corporation. Most probably, no? 
that is why if ever we have to include names we are we make sure that uh, we are certain of our of the identity of uh, dependents SEC has filed cases against Kappa founder and President Joel Apolinario and seven others for violation of Republic Act 8799 or the Securities Regulation Code. The regulatory body found that Kappa's promised 30% monthly interest rate, which the group calls blessing or loved gift, is fictional. Next hearing is set on July 15. The DOJ and the Bureau of Immigration have issued an immigration lookout bulletin order against the respondents, while the Davao Regional Trial Court already issued a pre cautionary hold departure order against the eight. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency are stepping up to bring a drug-free Philippines by the year 2020. Leia Lagan will tell us why. It is a big challenge for the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA to have a drug-free Philippines before the end of term of President Rodrigo Duterte. PIDEA Director General Aaron Aquino says, From more than 42,000 barangays nationwide, only 19,000 are considered as drug-free. Aquino adds that authorities need to double their effort to clear the more than 23,000 barangays of illegal drugs. From the said numbers, more than 1,500 are from the National Capital Region. 67% pa. The problem is, the remaining barangays are the most affected barangays particular leaders dito sa NCR. So, ito yung challenge na ma, 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 ma experience namin sa PDEA and other law enforcement agencies. And I just hope that 67% uh, we can comply that within the next three years. Aquino adds, if they fail to bring a drug-free country before the end of President Rodrigo's term, the next leader of the country is, must continue the war against drugs to avoid the drug campaign that's back to square one. Today is still positive na we will still reach the, the, the goal, our mandates, uh, to perform our mandates na ma-reach yung 100% drug by 2022. Today are hoping for a salary increase for them to recruit more agents next year. Aquino reveals some of their agents have transferred to the Philippine National Police because of the high salary of policemen. Our budget was slashed by 40%. So, so that's the biggest problem now and the biggest challenge that we're facing now. So hopefully by 2020, we can recruit more agents to beef up our manpower, especially on uh, our regional uh, headquarters. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The new Manila city government beefs up efforts to clean the streets of the country's capital. April Sinadoza has the news. Dirty sewers in Manila City greeted Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domagoso on Friday morning. Domagoso went to Recto Avenue in Divisoria to inspect the ongoing clearing operations in the city. Personnel from the city government helped in picking up the trash trapped inside the sewers. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, have earlier said garbage is the primary reason why some areas in the metropolis get flooded. The mayor says they will maintain the regular cleaning of sewers. Bakit siya mamimaintain? Kasi bukas na yung kalye. Wala nang uh, nakaharang. Wala nang mga obstruction. He also calls on barangay officials and the public to instill discipline in cleaning their respective areas. Lahat ng mga barangay chairman, barangay official, nananawagan ako sa inyo. Nakakahiya naman kung kami pa pumupunta sa barangay nyo at kami maglilinis ng barangay nyo. The mayor also orders the removal of illegal electricity connections within the area. After this morning's inspection, he made a surprise visit in Ongpin Street in Binondo, Manila. From there, he ordered the demolition of a makeshift barangay hall turned barracks beside the Roman Ongpin Monument. Wag niyong hayaan na babuyin ang mga heritage ng Maynila. Yan, yung mga struktura, estatwa ay bilang pagbibigay ng paggalang pagkilala sa mga taong noong unang panahon. Ng kabutihan. Oh. However, 
Tensions arose because the barangay chairman didn't admit beforehand that he owns the makeshift barangay hall. Eh, ang hirap ng lupa rito. Wala naman, ayoko naman maglagay sa bangketa na mas lalo nakakasagabal sa mga, o kaya container ban. Sagabal din na sa harapan ng ibang tindahan. Mga galit din, di ba? Kaya doon na lang ako sa tindahan ko. Sabi niya hindi kanya. Nung tumalikod ako, kanya na? Wala, wala pang 5 minutes? No, no, no. My point is, sabi niya kanina, hindi kanya. Pagtalikod ko, limang minuto, iba na ang dahilan nila. So, which is which? Then, lastly, kayo sumagot. Makatwiran? Kalye ito eh. Kalye ito. Dumagosos operations today are part of his administration's plan to maintain the cleanliness and orderliness within his jurisdiction. April Senedoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The former Cebu City Mayor may face charges after he ordered the stripping of of fixtures from the office of the mayor. Meanwhile, former Manila City Mayor Joseph Estrada may face charges for failing to turn over official documents to the new city administration. Arlene Delgado will tell us why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, plan to press charges against former Cebu City Mayor Tomas Osmeña. This is in connection with his order of stripping the mayor's office off of fixtures, which should have been for his successor, Mayor Edgar Labella. According to DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya, the act was strange and uncalled for. We are saddened no? and alarmed uh, by this development because um, it does not serve as a good example to all of our other local chief executives if they would do the same. Osmania has earlier defended that it was his money used in fixing the mayor's office in 2010 as the city council rejected his fund request. However, Malaya insists Osmania should have requested for reimbursement of his personal expenditure. Since he's the mayor, it would have been very easy for him to be reimbursed. The agency clarified they are still in the course of the investigation to find out if it was indeed Osmeña's personal money used in fixing the office amounting to 2 million pesos. The DILG add they are now coordinating with the city government of Cebu on their earlier plan to file charges against the former local chief executive before the office of the ombudsman for allegedly violating Article 308 of the revised penal code for theft and Section 3E of Republic Act 3019 or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Meanwhile, former Manila Mayor Joseph Estrada may also face charges for his alleged failure of turning over official city government documents to newly elected Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domagoso. The DILG spokesperson stresses it is the responsibility of the outgoing chief executive to organize a transition team and have a full turnover of the city's official documents to the incoming administration. We will consider filing charges against the former mayor. So let's await siguro muna yung, ano, yung uh, result of the, of, the, of the investigation kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari if indeed there was no transfer. The turnover ceremony was supposed to happen last Friday, but had been cancelled due to the absence of Estrada and his transition team. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. The Department of Public Works and Highways will open Skyway Stage 3 projects Plaza Dinlao Exit in the next two weeks. This road project in Metro Manila is deemed to help achieve President Rodrigo Duterte's promise of a five-minute travel time from Cubao to Makati. Joe Andano tells us why. Department of Public Works and Highways, or DPWH, Secretary Mark Villar conducted an inspection earlier today in the construction site of Skyway Stage 3 in Buendia, Makati to know the current status of several major road projects in Metro Manila. Skyway Stage 3 project is an 18.68-kilometer expressway that connects the South Luzon and North Luzon expressways. The expressway has eight exit ramps, composed of Buendia Avenue, President Quirino Avenue, Plaza de Lao, Nagtahan or Aurora Boulevard, E. Rodriguez Avenue, Quezon Avenue, Sergeant Rivera Street, and NLEX. The DPWH, along with the contractor, target the full completion of the project in the first quarter of 2021. 
Once it becomes operational, around 100,000 vehicles per day may traverse the expressway, decongesting traffic on EDSA. Travel time from Buendia, Makati to Balintawak in Quezon City will also be cut down to 15 to 20 minutes from the previous two hours once the Skyway project is completed according to the DPWH. Secretary Villar also assures the integrity of the expressway against a strong earthquake. This is a, a seismic rated and uh, it was constructed with that in mind for seismic events and up to a um, projection now up, up to 8. The secretary also announced the opening of Skyway Stage 3's 4-kilometer Plaza de Lao exit ramp in the next two weeks. Toll will be free for a month as the toll regulatory board are still deliberating on how much must be charged on motorists. Skyway Stage 3 is among the major road projects which the DPWH is fast-tracking as it is seen to help fulfill the president's promise to cut the travel time from Edsukubao to Makati to 5 minutes by the end of this year. Confident naman kami na substantially completed, which is meaning uh, around 95% of the project will be completed by this year, by, Christmas, by before the end of the year. May konting area lang na kailangan tapusin, pero nakuha na namin yung right of way, kaya tuloy-tuloy na po yung construction. John Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Makati City. Administration Party Partido Democratico Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan continues to support their party member in his House Speakership bid as the number of contenders reaches seven. Meanwhile, the regional party chaired by Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio launches the Duterte Coalition to unite the members of the 18th Congress. Grace Cousin reports why. In the middle of House speakership race in the lower house, the Partido Democratico Pilipino, Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban President, Senator Coco Pimentel III, maintains their stand that they will support their party member, Marinduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco. This despite presidential son, Davao City 1st District Representative Paulo Duterte's announcement of his speakership bid. And hugpong ng pagbabago regional party's endorsement of Davao City 3rd District Representative Isidro Ungab. Surigao del Sur Representative Prospero Pichai urges his colleagues to respect the decision of President Rodrigo Duterte that he will not endorse a speaker in the 18th Congress. In a statement, Congressman Pichai also persuades other government officials to keep their hands off the speakership race. Meanwhile, Regional Party Hugpong ng Pagbabago or HNP, led by Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, launched a Duterte coalition to unite the members of the lower house that are now divided because of the speakership race. In a statement, HNP said the coalition will push a strategic partnership between and among public servants who are deeply committed to institute reforms for better governance and development. The seven speaker aspirants are Davao City 3rd District Representative Isidro Ungab, Davao City 1st District Representative Paulo Duterte, Tagig Representative Alan Peter Caetano, Maninduque Representative Lord Alan Velasco, Davao del Norte Representative Pantalon Alvarez, Leyte Representative Martin Romualdez, and Bayan Muna Partilist Representative Carlos Zarate. The HNP urges the speaker aspirants to join the Duterte Coalition. In a statement, Congressman Velasco and Romualdez said they are ready and willing to join the coalition. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Caloocan City. The passage of the amendments to the bank secrecy law will still face challenges in the Congress. In particular, is the move to exempt public servants from this law. Nel Maribojo will tell us why. It seems that part of being a public servant is the threat of corruption allegations. When this happens, authorities look into the bank accounts of an accused. But before authorities can do that, they will need to abide by certain provisions under Republic Act No. 1405 or the Bank Secrecy Law. Under this law, the publicity of the details of the bank accounts of an employee or official of the government is strictly prohibited. Those who will be proved violating the law may face imprisonment of not more than 5 years and fine of not more than 20,000 pesos. There are some exemptions under this law. First, if the owner of the account will give a written permission or if a court issues a subpoena. While in the past years, there were instances in which some personalities in the world of politics were challenged to sign a waiver. This is to prove their innocence in alleged corruptions or ill-gotten wealth. 
like how Senator Antonio Trillanes IV challenged President Rodrigo Duterte and those who are close to the President. Not willing to sign a waiver. So you're not disputing it? You're not disputing, I'm uh, disputing it? I'm you're disputing it. Waiver. But you're not willing to sign the waiver? Mr. Chair, I'm not willing to sign the waiver. The allegations of hidden wealth against former COMELEC Chairman Andres Bautista. Tanging paraan ay kumag execute ng waiver. Si Chairman Bautista, kaugnay ng Bank Secrecy Law. Napanood ko karamihan ng kanyang mga pahayag sa media at sinasabi niyang open, willing at bukas siya sa anumang investigasyon. Former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno has also faced the same allegations. Total uso naman ngayon ng hamunan ng uh, waiver. Hinahamon ko si Chief Justice uh, Lourdes uh, Sereno na mag-issue ng waiver upang tingnan at uh, ripasuhin ang kanyang mga bank records. It was in the year 1955 when the bank secrecy law was first implemented. Some lawmakers have tried to amend it but failed. Senator Lacson himself was filed several proposed amendments since 2001 but those did not proceed. In the upcoming 18th Congress, he has another proposal to exempt public servants from the bank secrecy law. According to Senator Lacson, it is not clear yet if he will see the light in the 18th Congress. He says he will request the chairman of the bank's committee to designate him as the subcommittee chairman and that he is willing to sponsor the controversial bill. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Malacanang believes the recent issues on the West Philippine Sea will not affect the popularity of President Rodrigo Duterte. Rosalie Cos explains why. Election law expert and political analyst, Attorney Emilio Marañon III, believes that President Rodrigo Duterte's appeal to the public may be negatively affected by his administration's actions towards the maritime dispute in the West Philippine Sea. In particular is the latest maritime incident near Recto Bank in which a Chinese vessel rammed and sank a Filipino fishing boat with 22 Filipino fishermen on board on June 9, 2019. The lawyer says when it comes to the maritime dispute in the West Philippine Sea, Filipinos are one in protecting our maritime territory. Now, whether sa, sa usaping sovereignty, usaping doon sung, kung dapat ba natin ipaglaban yung ating uh, karagatan, dapat ba natin ipaglaban yung ating teritoryo, for me, this is a non-issue because lahat ng tao, lahat ng Pilipino ay iisa yung pananaw dito. He adds that the Duterte administration may change its strategy once it sees the impact on the chief executive's public satisfaction rating. But I'm pretty sure na in the coming months, the, the administration, the moment maramdaman na nila actually negative impact ito sa popularity ng Pangulo, I can feel to a certain extent na babawiin ito at saka in a way, mag-recalibrate mag, uh, ng strategy yung ating administrasyon. On the contrary, Malacanang Yang is confident this issue will not affect the public's trust in the Duterte administration. Malacanang is confident this issue will not affect the public's trust in the Duterte administration. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo points out popularity is not the administration's priority. Sinasabi nga ni Presidente, it doesn't matter to me kaya popular ako hindi. Basta, ang gagawin ko, what I will do is I will perform my duty in the Constitution as directed to me, which is Section 4, Article 2, saying that his prime duty, being the head of the government, is to serve and to protect the people. According to the palace, both the Philippines and China want closure of the recto maritime incident because the relations of the countries are affected and the issue has been blown up by the administration's detractors. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The verbal fishing agreement between the Philippines and China is not only against the Constitution but is also lopsided. Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio made the statement after presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said that the agreement allowing China to fish in Philippine waters was merely a verbal understanding between the two countries. Panelo said no written agreement was signed. Carpio also backed Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Luxin Jr., who also said that the verbal agreement cannot be enforced since a written document is needed to prove the said deal. The Department of Health reminds the public to be careful of street foods to avoid food poisoning. Aiko Miguel explains why. 
With their appealing taste, aroma and color, street foods in the country are almost irresistible. Not to mention, they are easy on the pocket. But according to the Department of Health, the public must not just be sure the food tastes good, but more importantly, the food must be safe and clean. Kailangan nakikita sana natin kung saan ang gagaling yung pagkain na kinakain natin tsaka kung paano siya napiprepare. Kasi yung mga food poisoning tsaka yung mga cases nga na katulad ito man nangyari, nagiging problem yan kapag hindi handled properly ang pagkain at hindi hygienic o hindi malinis. Health Undersecretary Eric Domingo points out that for the food to be safe to consume, be sure it is properly covered. Kasi kung nakatiwangwang yung pagkain, Merong chance siyempre ito nadapuan ng bakterya, lalo na kung hindi masyadong malinis ang paligid at magkaroon tayo ng contamination na pwedeng magkaroon ng food poisoning. Be mindful of the food's appearance, smell, and taste. Aside from street foods, Filipinos also patronize refreshments like gulaman and various flavors of milk tea. Undersecretary Domingo says it is harmful to drink tea or milk tea daily because it's just like coffee which is diuretic. Although there is no clear evidence that pearls are harmful to one's health, it is still harmful if consumed every day because milk tea has high sugar content. Well, lahat naman kasi ng pagkain dapat in moderation. Person can also suffer from indigestion due to excessive pearl intake. The public is also advised to be careful of bottled water sold in streets. Sana po kung mag magbibili tayo ng ganito, magkoconsume tayo, ang bilhin nyo yung FDA registered. The DOH also emphasizes that no matter how delicious foods and drinks appear, food safety and cleanliness should come first to avoid getting sick. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. A traditional event at Madrid Gay Pride, the high heel race is free and open to everyone who dares to run in heels of at least in four inches. Stephanie C. will tell us why. Dozens run on stilettos, most of them men, through the center of the Spanish capital on Thursday, showcasing great balance and defying attempts by the far-right party Vox to curtail their gay pride celebrations this year. The competition in Chueca, a gay-friendly neighborhood in central Madrid, draws competitors from abroad and is one of the most eagerly awaited parts of the annual festival of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Taking part in this unique extravaganza are runners young and old, athletic or portly. Reaching the finish line is not an easy task. Rules state that heels must be at least 10 centimeters high and the shoes are measured before the race. Madrid Pride is one of the world's largest LGBT celebrations that will culminate in a parade in the city center on Saturday. It would be a great error because I believe the celebration gives life to the Madrid center, especially this area and those businesses that are struggling to manage to recover during this period. Regarding those political parties, I would say, I'm so sorry, but they won't remove us from here. Oh, I'm a little nervous because I think people are serious about this. In Washington, it was more fun, but I look at the other competitors and I feel like they're very serious about this, so I'll give it my best shot. The ultra-conservative Vox, a political newcomer that won about 10% of the vote in April's national election and recently enabled the center-right to take over the Madrid City Hall, has increasingly attacked the festival and LGBT rights in Spain even suggesting that they would like to move the celebration from the city center. The race winner not only has pride in their achievement, but walks off in their stilettos 350 euros better off. Stephanie C. UNTV News and Rescue. A risk reduction official shows the hazards Manila City is facing, especially the possible occurrence of a strong quake. Ray Pelayo explains why. Tingnan kung ano ba ang kalidad ng mga bahay at busale. Ang Manila, maraming luma. Marami ding informal settlement. At marami dyan ay non-engineered ang mga bahay. These are some of the things 
that the city government of Manila should do to prepare for the big one or the magnitude 7.2 earthquake that can be generated from the West Valley Fault according to Department of Science and Technology under Secretary Renato Solidum. Early this week, Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno announced that the city is not yet prepared for such kind of event. He added that the city has no concrete disaster risk reduction and management plan nor a detailed hazard map. Based on a report from the Department of the Interior and Local Government, Manila does not meet the criteria on responding to calamities. As of now, the, the city of Manila is not ready. So I mean, Even on record. No? Yusek Solidum notes that the soil of Manila is soft because it is near the Manila Bay. Ang kaibahan ng Quezon City, Manila, ay may, may tigas ang foundation ng Quezon City, Manila, hindi malambot. The Quezon City Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council was the 2018 Gawad Kalasag Awardee as the best local DRRMC under the highly urbanized city category. Quezon City has designated six district evacuation sites aside from the Quezon City Circle. Mike Marasigan, head of the QC DRRMO, said that part of their contingency plan is the color-coded alert level system which automatically cues the government's action. If the magnitude and the epicenter is near Quezon City, 5.5, below, uh, then we could all, always trigger the yellow alert, meaning on call standby and do damage assessment immediately. Earthquake drills are also conducted to prepare residents. Marasigan admits that the response to emergencies such as the big one cannot be shouldered by the government alone. That is why the citizens must be capacitated. They will be ready as an individual. No? Ibig sabihin, Meron kang go bag ready or yung mean, disaster kits na din ang sinasabi natin. And susunod yan as a family. Kung nag-usap-usap na ba tayo, pag halimbawa lumindol, magkakaiwalay tayo, saan tayo mag-meet up? Yusek Solidum said Manila City can prepare as long as the local government does it systematically. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Quezon City. And for the news abroad, the strongest earthquake to strike Southern California in 25 years hit the region, touching off house fires and damaging buildings in a desert town northeast of Los Angeles. Sunny Cause explains why. Southern California has been struck by its strongest earthquake in two decades, causing damage and fires. The epicenter of the 6.4 magnitude tremor was near the city of Ridgecrest, which is about 240 kilometers northeast of Los Angeles. Firefighters provided medical assistance and dealt with fires in and out around the city. People from the Mojave Desert to the Pacific Coast reported feeling the quake, which hit on Independence Day. There was significant damage in Ridgecrest, which lies southwest of the epicenter. It's everything starts shaking and like maybe 15 seconds and it was really, really intense because like I was like, oh my God, what to do? And I ran to my living room and I had myself like under the table and I was holding myself like next probably, I don't know, 10 seconds, like and everything was shaking, you know, and I was like, and I was scared they're going to get worse, you know. So. Or I was in the office and I started feeling shaking and then we went into the warehouse and noticed that stuff had fallen in the warehouse. The Ridgecrest Regional Hospital was evacuated. The service has responded to nearly two dozen incidents ranging from medical assistance from minor injuries to fires. So there was like just like a fast movement, of, like the room and my TV was moving and everything was moving and then I started running so I can like evacuate outside and then I fell from the stairs and my uncle got twisted. But a lot of the power has been restored. The issues that we're running into is uh, gas leaks. That's the majority of our calls right now. And then also water leaks, especially buildings that are sprinklered. So that, those are the hazards that we have right now. Uh, we haven't reported, there's no major injuries at this time. Ridgecrest Mayor Peggy Breeden said she had declared a state of emergency. Because we've had over 87 aftershocks of this, we don't know what's going to happen. And with that, the state of emergency allows us to seek significant help from other governmental entities and that is the reason why. The earthquake was reportedly felt as far as Las Vegas in Nevada. There have been several smaller aftershocks. President Donald Trump tweeted that the situation was under control. The U.S. Geological Survey said the epicenter was in relatively uninhabited area. Officials expect that the magnitude 5 aftershock will likely take place in the next day or so.
Sinecast UNTV News and Rescue, Los Angeles, USA. Flanked by military vehicles and an array of American flags, President Donald Trump paid tribute to U.S. troops during an Independence Day celebration that drew crowds of supporters. Kath Dumaraos will tell us why. With U.S. fighter jets flying overhead, President Donald Trump praised the military and reveled in a show of pomp and patriotism on Thursday in a celebration of Independence Day that critics accused him of turning into a political event. Trump dismissed concerns ahead of the ceremony about the expense and militaristic overtones of the event outside the 97-year-old Lincoln Memorial, a symbol of national unity. That same American spirit that emboldened our founders has kept us strong throughout our history. To this day, that spirit runs through the veins of every American patriot. It lives on and each and every one of you here today. It is the spirit, daring and defiance, excellence and adventure, courage and confidence, loyalty and love that built this country into the most exceptional nation in the history of the world and our nation is stronger today than it ever was before it is its strongest now trump praised american military despite having himself avoided the draft during the vietnam war with bone spurs in his feet with well-planned choreography he told stories about each military branch before separate dramatic flyovers of their respective military aircraft for over 65 years, no enemy Air Force has managed to kill a single American soldier because the skies belong to the United States of America. Later in the day, the skies over Washington, D.C. were aglow in red, white, and blue fireworks. The July 4th holiday celebrates the U.S. founders declaring independence from Britain in 1776. Kat Numeraos, UNTV News and Rescue. A fungus better known for eating dead wood can also recover the world's most expensive precious metal from waste water and even add value to it. Nina Armilio reports why. Fungus and expensive precious metals are not items usually associated with one another. This fungus, white rot fungus, is best known for eating dead wood. But scientists have discovered it has another use. It can pull one particularly expensive element, palladium, from industrial wastewater, where the metal appears as a byproduct. In other words, what goes down the drain isn't necessarily gone. So we take wastewaters, industrial affluents, or lab waste, which is rich in palladium, and uh, we want to recycle it, recover it. Uh, we've discovered that a special type of fungi could not only absorb palladium but also to reduce palladium and produce palladium nanoparticles. If it sounds complex, that's because it is. But palladium overtook gold and platinum as the world's priciest metal earlier this year. It's largely used in vehicle exhausts to curb harmful emissions, and demand has pushed up the price. So this could be good news for industry in the future. Unfortunately, this process doesn't benefit the car industry itself right now. But it could be used, the scientists say, in chemistry to help develop new pharmaceuticals and possibly for use in future fuel cells. Nina Emilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Dutch midfielder uh, Frankie de Jong is the newest addition to the Lionel Messi-led FC Barcelona club. The former Ajax star shares that he is happy to play with Barca, especially with the player whom he looks up to in the sport, Messi. De Jong's signing was announced last January ahead of the 2019-2020 season at a cost of 75 million euros plus 11 million in variables, according to FC Barcelona's website. 22-year-old De Jong made his international debut for the Netherlands in 2015. We all have our best friends. For the Filipino millen millennials, what characteristics do they look for in a best friend 
in these modern times. Find out as Harleen Delgado reports. Beshi, bestie, beshi may, beshi cake, bez, or simply best friend. Whatever call sign it is, we all have our own greatest friend. But what do Filipino millennials look for in a best friend in these times? We ask some students in a school campus here in Quezon City. For 19-year-old Jasmine, what matters most is the person's sincerity. Best friend is... May intimate relationship which is open kayo sa isa't isa and maasahan mo siya sa lahat ng oras. Meanwhile, Alex and Ira are living proof that best friends can turn into lovers. For them, they are much happier that they were best friends first before entering any romantic relationship. Yung ano po, parehas kami may sense of humor. Mabait. Tapos po yung pareho po kayo may pagkakalog. Ito lang sasabihin ko sa kanya, kahit, kahit anong yari, hindi ko siya bibitawat. Nina and Shilu also agree that a best friend is someone who knows your value, whenever, wherever. Yung lagi mo malalapitan, ganyan, yung pag kailangan mo siya, nandyan siya. Pag hindi kayo magkasama, parang pinapahalagan niyo po yung isa't isa kahit nasa malayo kayo. Alexis and Alexandra, meanwhile, shows that sisters are the best and greatest of friends. According to them, understanding each other as sisters is what makes them the closest. Important din na uh, ka-vibes mo siya. Because, mm -hmm. ano nga naman yung point, if you can't spend time together doing the same things that you like. Mm -hmm. Well, sisters, we say nag-aaway, <laughs> pero syempre hindi nagtatagal. Mm -hmm. mag kahit hindi kayo magtay na makipagbate, at magbabate, magbabate pa rin. We may have our own sets of personalities, interests, and preferences. But always remember that at the end of the day, it is not the quantity, but the quality of a real friend that counts. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. And those are the reasons behind the news this July 5, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar, Amangelo Castro III. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. Good evening. Lahat ng mga barangay chairman, barangay official, nananawagan ako sa inyo. Nakakahiya naman kung kami pa pumupunta sa barangay nyo at kami maglilinis ng barangay nyo. Confident naman kami na substantially completed, uh, which is meaning... Uh, around 95% of the project will be completed by this year, by Christmas, by before the end of the year. May konting area lang na kailangan tapusin, pero nakuha na namin yung right of way, kaya tuloy-tuloy na po yung construction. But I'm pretty sure na in the coming months, the, the administration, the moment maramdaman na nila actually negative impact ito sa popularity ng Pangulo, I can feel to a certain extent na babawiin ito at saka in a way, mag, mag uh, re recalibrate ng strategy yung ating administrasyon. And like maybe 15 seconds and it was really really intense because like I was like oh my god what to do and I ran to my living room and I had myself like under the table and I was holding myself like next probably I don't know 10 seconds like and everything was shaking you know and I was like and I was scared they're gonna get worse you know because we've had over 87 aftershocks of this we don't know what's going to happen and with that the state of emergency allows us to seek significant help from other governmental entities and that is the reason why.